A very good morning to you honored guests, friends, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to what does promise to be a few hours of celebrating excellence, generosity, guidance, inspiration, and I think all round solid leadership from the anchors of the UJ School of Tourism and Hospitality. I'm broadcaster and producer Ursula Chigani, and I am, I'm thrilled and honored to be joining you at this singular occasion this morning as your MC. We'll be keeping the formalities light, I think, and the gratitude absolutely flowing. And now to deliver an official word of welcome and to further enlighten us about this special occasion, I'm pleased to introduce on stage the director of the School of Tourism and Hospitality, ladies and gentlemen, the very delightful Dr. Diane Abrams. program director. Good morning everyone and welcome. It's an absolute honor and privilege to welcome you firstly to the University of Johannesburg and our School of Tourism and Hospitality. Today we're just going to pause for a moment and reflect on our journey to date and to celebrate a little bit. But before I continue let me just acknowledge in our presence this morning we have our Vice Chancellor Prof. Salitsi Marwala. It's great to have you here sir. Uh, Sir Saul Kirzner, always good to have you home. <laughs> Prof Rensburg, I'm glad you made time to come and see us today, and your wonderful wife, Zeka. Our SDH board members, our executive dean, Prof Van Lil, and our vice deans uh, are here this morning with us. Our SDH board members, our chairperson, our new chairperson, Ms. Ramawella who's joined us this morning as well. It's nice to see Doc Monet and his wife. Thank you for joining us this morning, Doc. It's really nice to have you here with us this morning. And to all the alumni, industry partners, and students, and staff members that are here this morning, you're all welcome. You know, often we don't take time, um, we, we're ready to plan the next big thing. And we don't take time to just reflect on achievements and milestones. And that, in fact, can be such an impetus for the next big thing. So today is all about that. And it's also about appreciation and acknowledgement of leaders that have guided the SDH on its journey to date. Um, it's also a little bit of a commitment that we're going to go the extra mile, Prof, in terms of <coughs> taking the school to the next level. So our president has put tourism right front and center. He's given it quite a prominence. And we're going to use that in terms of leading talent development, research, um, we're going to start engaging with the fourth industrial revolution <laughs> in terms of the challenges that that has for our industry. So VC, we're saying IR 4.0 is loading at this stage. <laughs> so mine is not to make a speech this morning, it's really to welcome you all and for us to, to celebrate uh, leadership and the school. Um, thank you. Half a century ago, in 1968, the Hotel School of the Vadvartstrand College of Advanced Technical Education officially opened its doors in the central business district of Johannesburg, the City of Gold, and the major cultural and economic hub of Africa. In 1994, the transformation of the political landscape in South Africa led to significant growth in the local tourism and hospitality industry. The need for a hospitality workforce trained to international standards became evident in as far back as 1998. In 2005, the dramatic restructuring of South Africa's higher education landscape from 36 to 22 universities led to the establishment of the University of Johannesburg. The former TWR Department of Tourism and the TWR Hotel School were merged into a new school aptly named the School of Tourism and Hospitality, or STH. On 30th August 2005, Mr. Saul Kirzner and the former South African Deputy President, Ms. Pumzilem Lambongoka, officially opened the custom-built School of Tourism and Hospitality buildings on the UJ's Bunting Road campus. Significant sponsors of the different venues included the Kirzner family, Waterford Group, Stellenbosch Wine Route, 
City Lodge Hotel Group, Orion Hotels, Zohosan, and the Protea Hotel Group. Later, other sponsors such as Flight Center, Avis, AHA Hotels, and Protea Marriott came on board as venue sponsors. The building was specifically designed to ensure optimization of a productive educational environment, as well as state-of-the-art training facilities such as industrial kitchens, restaurants, a wine cellar, and conference facilities to ensure practical skills are developed. The STH has made immense progress in transforming into what is recognized today as a world-class institution with an unwavering vision to develop sought-after, future-fit leaders who create legacies. Given the number of highly successful alumni who have graduated from the STH and who have indeed created legacies in the tourism and hospitality industry, both nationally and internationally, the dream is becoming a reality for many STH students year after year. Today, STH is one of the major graduate contributors to the tourism and hospitality industry, producing scores of top achieving students. We proudly pursue this vision with humility, perseverance and grace and with the unwavering support of our partners in industry and alumni. The STH has transformed itself over the years in terms of its staff profile, academic program offerings, research profile, industry relationships as well as its commercial operations. In 2012, STH reviewed its program qualification mix and now offers a full range of program offerings from diplomas, degrees, to honors, masters and a PhD. Another key initiative is the continuous improvement and amendment to its undergraduate and continuous education programs ensuring that these remain market relevant. The STH together with the Johannesburg Business School is exploring executive education programs. The new MBA program will have a tourism elective. STH's many successes have come because of our pursuit of these three goals. Commitment to transformation, ensuring we provide access to and embrace and nurture the most vulnerable students, and continue to drive excellence in all we do. STH is gearing itself towards the challenges posed by the fourth industrial revolution and is actively engaging with the disruptors in the tourism sector and assessing the impact that large-scale automation, artificial intelligence, the adoption of smart technologies and big data will have on the growing tourism sector. While the university continues to pursue global excellence and stature, it maintains its national responsiveness. As the STH, we are passionate about developing pan-African intellect and will endeavor to increase collaboration with key African thought leaders in order to produce indigenous knowledge and research for inclusion into our curriculum. Community engagement in the form of service learning and community-based research is a core academic function of the university. As such, service learning is also a compulsory, credit-bearing component of identified academic programs at STH. The STH has led many great community engagement initiatives within UJ, often with great reward. STH students are involved in a number of community engagement projects which offer them an opportunity to develop life skills, be involved, give back and enter the workplace as well-rounded, mindful graduates. The School of Tourism and Hospitality has significant partnerships with industry. These partners support the STH through guest lectures, work integrated learning, bursaries, top achiever awards, sponsorships and internships. STH also offers bursary support for eligible applicants. To date, 10 million rand in bursaries have been given to 500 students. In 2016, the STH partnered with industry and alumni to raise funds in support of the missing middle students. More than 2.2 million rand was raised and 40 students were unable to continue or complete their studies. 
By providing support to these students, the school is able to ensure the maximum number of students complete their qualifications and graduate, thereby contributing positively to the skills pool of this exciting and booming sector of tourism and hospitality. We thank you, our industry partners, alumni and staff for your commitment to life-changing education for all our students. Since 2010, the STH's research profile has grown exponentially due to an increase in the postgraduate stream, growing scholarly profiles of staff, postdoctoral research fellows and an expanded research affiliate network. STH now boasts international and national partnerships with 26 senior research associates from 24 universities across the globe and it continues to grow its research output, which is currently 25% of the College of Business and Economics' total research output. The University of Johannesburg's College of Business and Economics, or CBE, was launched in 2017, strategically positioning the University of Johannesburg to be at the center of regeneration in Africa through socio-economic transformation. STH is one of the six schools within the CBE. The STH was recently ranked 34th globally for hospitality and tourism management by Global Shanghai Ranking Consultancy and scored first in tourism and leisure studies in South Africa by QS Ranking. The STH also enjoys Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points or HACCP Food Safety Management System Certification making UJ the first higher education institution to achieve such a certification in South Africa. State-of-the-art training facilities allow students to gain valuable hospitality experiences, while the commercial side of STH not only offers a platform for students to showcase their culinary, food and beverage expertise, but also operates as a profitable business entity. These facilities include the Waterford Restaurant, the Stellenbosch Room, Kersner Conference Rooms and Bistro, City Lodge Hotel Group Syndicate Rooms, the Protea Marriott Auditorium and the Design Cafe Coffee Shop. Transformation is a national imperative and therefore an area that STH also prioritizes. We work with industry and government to ensure the transformation of higher education and the dynamic tourism sector. With more than 10 million international tourists flocking to experience South Africa in 2016 alone and 11.7 .7 million South Africans taking 24.3 million trips around their own scenic country, it is clear that the tourism industry is thriving and that the future of the sector is bright. It is up to us to ensure that we provide the opportunities, the tools and the skills for the next generation of tourism and hospitality professionals. South Africa is buzzing with talent and being one of the top tourism destinations in the world, the opportunities are endless. The African sky is not the limit. The world awaits young and innovative thinkers, leaders, entrepreneurs, executive chefs, hoteliers, tour and travel operators, tour and travel guides, policy makers, strategists, researchers and industry disruptors. And we as the STH wish to play our role in the development of talent from our continent and beyond. As we take the lead in the sector, we will continue to make it count. So to those dreaming of a career in tourism and hospitality, we at the STH want to reassure all those dreamers that we are here to help turn those dreams into reality. The future is yours. Reimagine it. young stars and we thank you for taking the torch that we've handed over to you and for carrying it even further.
Ladies and gentlemen, the care and determination to be found in this institution are unbelievable. And I think they do deserve another round of applause. And thank you very much, Dr. Dee, for your warm welcome. Next, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce our esteemed keynote speaker, who is also a guest of honour, I'd like to call on a much treasured member of the UJ Board of Governors and, in my estimation at least, an all-round great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome STH Board Member and Golden Circle alumnus, our very own Len Bowman. I thank you. Um, it is truly an honor to be here with uh, all of you today and uh, really special for me to be able to introduce someone who really needs no introduction, my friend, partner, relative, uh, Sol Kirsten. Sir Sol, it's the first time I've called you Sir. <laughs> Um, but before I do, uh, I'd like to just talk about a little history um, because, it, because the results you saw are pretty amazing, but those results are not achieved without people. And uh, I owe this uh, university and uh, its former development a lot because I would clearly not have accomplished what I have had I not gotten the education. Uh, I did here. So to those young people in the back, um, you're very fortunate to be able to attend and get the education you do here. <clears throat> but my journey began with my management lecturer, who later became head of the school, uh, Doc Mornay. And uh, it's amazing how he kept in touch with various of us. Uh, I left South Africa in uh, 1976 and he kept in touch and I kept coming back and he kept telling me I need to stay involved and I got involved and we've had more than 30 students come over and get it, um, training in the US at various of our hotels and then Doc told us about this project where there was a merger of these various institutions and the beginning of uh, this uh, University of Johannesburg in 2005 and part of that was to build a new building. And funds had to be raised to build this new building, and you needed a real sponsor behind that. And in working with Doc and Cyril Gephardt and um, VC Connie McCarty at that point, um, and, and approaching Butch and then Sol Kersner, uh, they made a commitment to really come on board and to help to fund the building. But the biggest issue that both Butch and Sol raised was, you know, it's all well and good to raise money and to build a building, but where is the commitment and how are we really going to accomplish uh, making the school a great school that provides a great education? And I really think that's where the leadership came in with VC uh, Iron Rensburg, who provided the leadership, the resources, uh, and made sure that the right talent was in place to really uh, drive the school and accomplish the incredible goals that have been accomplished. So we, we truly want to thank you. We want to thank all the leadership, uh, Daniel, uh, Diane, uh, we want to thank the board, our first board member, the late Billy Gallagher, was amazing. Um, what he did, the, the time, the commitment, uh, the drive, the people he pulled in was um, just incredible. And Gillian following up on uh, his talent and leading us until Monday. And Mitsatsi, we really look forward to working with you and our new board. So we have an incredible opportunity here. But now to our keynote speaker. Um, so uh, Sol developed uh, the first five-star hotel here in South Africa. Uh, went on to develop the first major hotel company, uh, Southern Sun. Uh, then Sun International. 
uh, here a gaming and lodging uh, company in, in South Africa. And then uh, that wasn't enough, so he decided to go around the world and develop some incredible resorts, uh, hotels, uh, mega resorts uh, around the world. And then the first six star uh, hotel company, as he said, with one and only. So Sol, as I said, you need no introduction, uh, but we really appreciate everything you've done because the school wouldn't be what it is without you. So if you'll come up and say a few words, we'd really appreciate it. Well, I've got to say, uh, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, uh, quite a few years after we first uh, got involved. Uh, I must say that uh, right from the outset, and I entered the ind industry in South Africa, if you can call it an industry at that time, in 1962. And uh, at that point, there, uh, it was an infant industry, and uh, there were no grading systems. I mean, it was a sort of a real boxing match, getting in to try and uh, make a name for yourself. In any event, I, uh, the one thing I believed in, in 62, when I decided to uh, forget about being an accountant, it was boring and a waste of time, I threw that out and decided to, uh, uh, decided to buy, uh, a hotel on the back streets of Durban, which was the Astro Hotel, which was not even a one star, there was no grading system there, anyway. But I was determined to get into the business and I just somehow loved the idea of the hotels. And I recognized then that our industry was in pretty, uh, pretty poor shape because I started collecting brochures from the hotels in Miami and Hawaii, and I realized looking at that, that what we had in South Africa was a bit of a joke. And But that gave me some inspiration and hope that we could do something. And I got quite fortunate, in fact, because I, as I say, I started, I had no money. I managed to get the lease of this one-star hotel on the back streets of Durban. And as, as I was going around saying goodbye to my clients in the uh, my, in my audit days, the one uh, one of the directors of uh, Play Glass the audit that we were doing, I sat and had a cup of coffee with him, and he said, "Listen, Sol, he says you're a young kid. He says you're 25. You're a partner of one of the most prestigious firms of auditors." in, uh, uh, maybe I'm too close, uh, okay, and uh, he said, what are you going to do running a one-star hotel in the back streets of Durban, uh, where you hear uh, you're a junior partner of one of the most prest prestigious firms, and I said, no, 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 Harold, I said, I'm not doing it for that. I said, I'm going to build South Africa's first truly international, and there were no five stars at that time, but first great hotel, resort hotel. And he said, really? I said, where are you going to do this? And I said, uh, out of them Shlonga Rocks. He said, how do you know about them Shlonga Rocks? And I said, well, you know, I take my girlfriends out there in the <laughs> evening. It's, it's a nice spot. And I noticed that they have wonderful beaches there. <laughs> so he said, you know, he said, I have a house at Umschlanga Rocks. He said, I was thinking of selling it. He says, it's a sleepy old village. He says, why don't we drive out? Show me where you're going to build this hotel. I said, sure. We drove out and went to the actual site where Beverly Hills stands today. And there was an old house on the site. And I said, that's the site. <laughs> he said, well, how do you know you can get I said, listen, you know, when I can afford to try and buy it, 
then uh, I'll make arrangements to meet the people that own it. I said, but that is one of the great sites. And I love them Schlange because there's no marine parade running between the hotels and the beach. You go from your hotel on the beach. Finished telling him why I thought it was good. He said, hey, he said, what will this thing cost? And I said, you know, it may cost almost a million rand. And he said, wow, it's quite a lot. He said, listen, I have 150,000 rand in the stock market. He said, I'm prepared to sell my shares in the stock market and put that into your hotel that's going to cost almost a million. And he said, if you can find the rest, any way you like it, loans, this, uh, borrowed, he says, I'll give you 50% and we can be partners. And I said, really, Harold? I said, oh, let's go to the real estate guys up the road. <laughs> and we started negotiating immediately. I just had a belief at that time that South Africa was no different. Uh, and people in South Africa would appreciate the same quality of hotels that were being built in the US uh, and elsewhere. And I recognized at that time that our hotel industry was really poor by international standards. And I only knew that I'd never been abroad. I only knew that because of the brochures I'd been collecting. And in any event, uh, I, that's how I got going. And uh, once we had a little of Harold's money put together, and I actually started building the Beverly Hills, we'd acquired the site and started building, I realized that I'd never been abroad and all I'd seen or uh, the brochures of these hotels, and I figured, you know, if I'm going to build one of the great hotels that are going to match hotels anywhere in the world, I better see what those hotels really look like. <laughs> so I uh, got myself, uh, and having looked at the brochures, I realized I couldn't get to Hawaii and all over the bloody world, uh, but I could afford to get a ticket and get to Miami and have a look at all those hotels on the Miami Strip that I've been reading about. And uh, I arrived uh, in Miami, and uh, I gave myself two days, one day in Miami and one day in New York to see the hotels and get out, because I couldn't afford to stay much longer than that. <laughs> so I arrived and uh, checked into the, not the Fontainebleau, I couldn't afford that, but one of the smaller hotels, I got a cab driver, and I said to him, I'd just flown all the way, I said, look, I need to see every hotel on Miami Beach before we finish tonight, because tomorrow I'm off to New York. And he said, well, he says, that's going to take some time. In any event, at 2 o'clock that morning, I bought him some dinner at Wolfie's, which is a deli down, down Miami, and we'd seen every hotel on Miami Beach. And I was convinced then that what I'd planned and what we'd already started, the excavations of, was in fact going to be one of the hotels that could live with the best in the world as resort hotels. And I was very confident. In fact, the next morning I got up, the flight to New York was only at one o'clock. So I went to the swimming pool and I swam and I just enjoyed myself. I knew my work was done and I knew that what we designed was going to match with everything I'd seen. And uh, in fact, I went to the pool, and when I got back in the elevator, the woman was crying, uh, running the elevator. I said, Madam, I said, why are you crying? And she said, our president's been shot. And that's when JFK had been shot. It was November of 63 when I just started flatting the earthworks for Beverly Hills. Then I flew up to New York and I spent one day in New York, I saw the hotels there. I got on the plane, came back, I was absolutely confident, said to the architect, I said, we don't have to change a thing. I said, what we've got is perfect. And that was the Beverly Hills and, uh, and I must say, I think it did turn out to be uh, pretty successful, although initially, uh, everybody said, that they called it the heavenly bulls and said, this would never work, it's far too expensive. 
and I was absolutely confident that South Africans were no different to people around the world. If you gave them quality, they would uh, pay uh, and be happy to do it. In any event, that was my start to the industry here in South Africa, and I must say, uh, I look back on this and I say I could not have chosen. I think I would have made a lousy char chartered accountant. I think I would have, in any event, thrown that up after a couple of years, whereas uh, being in the hotel industry, I was uh, just excited and as we grew and grew and the industry grew. and uh, The one thing that we were always frustrated is that all our top folks, I had to recruit them. And they were guys for, that came out of the school, the hotel school in uh, Cornell. A couple of my first top execs came out of uh, the schools there. Uh, out of uh, the Swiss uh, hotel schools at Luzon. And it was frustrating that I had a team, ultimately, a top team of executives who all came from abroad. And the only South African guys in the top team were the finance guys and people that had the qualifications here. And it was, uh, you know, uh, I, I think the industry initially that took the initiative and started training some of our young South Africans and we ultimately began to see some real talent running hotels. But I think the real breakthrough did come for the establishment of this uh, institution. And I was very, very enthused about being able to participate and make hopefully a meaningful co contribution towards the, the advancing uh, this, uh, uh, this institution. And uh, I think that this hotel school, uh, I think the industry can flourish now. I think, uh, and I've been, in the, in the early years, I was, I think, a lot more involved then my son Butch got more involved, Len uh, being very involved. But it's been exciting to see the growth, the success, and I've over the years met students that you've produced and indeed met students in the hotels. Uh, and uh, I mean, this is, I think, what's going to continue to ensure that the hotel industry flourishes here in South Africa and indeed in Africa. I think, you know, a lot of our the hotel groups I see are expanding through Africa. And I, I think uh, uh, that what the work that's being done here is uh, absolutely critical to the success of the hotel industry. I'd like to congratulate you, Prof, been associated with since the beginning, yourself. Uh, I think it's a great job that uh, has been done. It's significant and critical, I think, for South Africa. So I'd like to uh, just thank you for having us here today. I'm delighted to be here to participate uh, and to just enjoy the fruits of our investment. <laughs> Any event, thanks very much. And From the back streets of Durban <laughs> to the rest of the world via Mflanga Rocks and then Joburg CBD, well, Santon, and then the Bushveld of the Northwest Province, which was in Boputswana. If I am appearing to be holding my gushing back, Sir Sol, it's because I'm trying very hard to. When I was studying public relations at what was then Wits Tech, it was your Melanie Millen Moore. Ah, legendary, right? She informed a lot of my decisions as a young PR student. 
She was the woman who decided to paint elephants' toenails pink for the launch of Sun City. And it was a huge, big, fat splash in the Sunday Times. And as a class, we took you and your audacious dreams, and you were pretty much our case study for the entire three years. <laughs> Every time we had to design a campaign, the benchmark had been set, and we had to remind ourselves of what Saul Kersner and Melanie Millen Moore had accomplished. For years and years and years, the PR fraternity dined on that success. But myself, my career, and my studies were intertwined around you even before I got to Fitz Tech. I used to be a drummy, a baton twirler, and a flaggy. And I wasn't very good at either, but boy, could I smile. And because of the smile, and I think how cute I looked in my boots, I was invited to join a squad that formed part of a much bigger squad that performed at, I think it was your 50th birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a jolly good party. <laughs> and completely off the record, it's also where I learned what champagne tasted like. <laughs> So, thank you very much. I think before there was even Madonna, there was Sol. You were the first superstar that everybody knew by a first name only. So, you've now become Sir Sol Kersner, but to us, you'll always be the Sun King. Thank you, sir. I'm going to visit myself a back street of Durban to see if I can become the next Sol Kersner. Yeah. Next, ladies and gentlemen, the sentiment of recognition continues, and I don't think, having seen it, that there's anything that properly encapsulates our gratitude for what another of our guests of honor has done for us, as well as the acknowledgement that the soon-to-be-seen Fada Design Trophy does. Ladies and gentlemen, that fine token of appreciation was it was the winning entry in a competition undertaken by third year industrial design students whom STH briefed according to the history and the elements of representative, or rather elements that are representative of the school. The criteria included the use and illustration of Pan-Africanism, practicality, weight, time constraints, costing, overall look and feel, and community engagement. To be presented to our Professor Iron this morning, the trophy was beaded with great care by the women of Riabuka, with whom the students currently work. And this is what the winning designer, Shelby Channer, has to say about the trophy. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shelby Channer, and I have designed the trophy that you will be receiving today. So I want to give you a little bit of background of where this design came from. Uh, when Dr. Diane, Patrick and Yasira first spoke to our group, they stressed the importance of um, SCH's values and ideals being embodied into the trophy. Those being um, vision, growth, innovation, uh, leadership and pan-Africanism. The final design therefore incorporates all of these ideals in different aspects. Um, the African base is very iconic of our roots, of our rich culture, and this idea of pan-Africanism. The sweeping form across the continent represents STH's vision of being um, across the continent, pan-African, and as well as international, being leaders in their field. Um, the form also begins small in the South African region and grows across the African continent, representing growth and innovation. Um, the form was heavily inspired by the Kersner building, which is an iconic landmark to SCH, the way that it curves and sweeps upwards. Throughout the process, I uh, collaborated with an NGO, namely the Riaboka Foundation, and those ladies were responsible for the beads on the trophy. Um, the colours were carefully selected in order to represent a sunrise, which is symbolic of possibility and vision. Um, 
Therefore, the base, the beads, and the clear resin all allow for this African aesthetic, this contemporary aesthetic. So each trophy is handmade and unique, and therefore the trophies that you will be holding hold the symbols and values of STH, encompassing all that has already been achieved and everything that is still yet to come. Thank you. So that was Shelby, the winning designer of what is the first of a future series of trophies of appreciation. And next, Sir Sol Kersner and the STH Student Liaison Committee Chairperson, Letabo Mbela, will present the first of these trophies to the first of their recipients. Professor Iron Rensberg, please join us on stage along with Sir Sol and Letabo. Professor Rensberg, if we could hear from you, please, sir, at the, the lectern. Vice-Chancellor and Principal and other executives who are present, the Dean of the College of Business and Economics, the Head of the School of Tourism, Hospitality, and the other heads who are present today, the Chairman, Chairperson, apologies, my wife and I always have this debate about whether it's chairman or chairperson. And uh, I had this argument, okay, you can't have an argument with Nkosa Zanet Lamini Zuma, right? <laughs> and she just made it clear to me, it's chairperson, period. So the chairperson and the outgoing chairperson, members of the board of the STH, Sir Sol Kersner, other dignitaries present, professional and support staff, student leaders, and our students. It's a very special privilege to be back here at the university for the very first time since I concluded 
my term of office at the end of last year and handed over to Professor Marwala. Today is also a very special occasion, which is both humbling and uplifting. But my role here today is simply to say thank you <coughs> to Sir Sol, to the STH board, to the vice chancellor, and to the university for bestowing this very special honor on me and my family. And so I thank you for this immense honor which I take neither lightly nor for granted. And I accept this very special honor on behalf of myself and my family, of my ancestors, and those who have given life to me, who have shaped me. And so Rendsburg represents only one part of that ancestry that includes Reed and Hitzroth and Whitting, and those even before them, and equal, I accept this with great humility on behalf of my wife and her family and her ancestors who continue to shape and influence my evolving identity. Here at UJ, ours has been the relentless pursuit of excellence in research and innovation, in teaching and learning, in student life and in nurturing our talented staff. This we have pursued, rel relentless pursuit of excellence, in order for us collectively to nurture intergenerational equity, inclusion and transformation, and in order to give new meaning to what greatness is all about. Our successes accomplished thus far are self-evident. Almost 30% of our first year class come from the poorest communities in our nation. Almost 44% of our academics today are black. Our students continue to confirm their excellent learning and living experience in the many surveys that we undertake, both undergraduate and postgraduate. Our graduate output continues to excel, while our research outputs have almost quantupled over the last period. And I know that Prof Marwala will relentlessly, is relentlessly pursuing all of these agenda. And these results are reflected in our national, pan-African and global rankings for whatever that mean to each one of us. As we reminded this morning, our School for Tourism and Hospitality is ranked 34th in the world and first in Africa. I didn't hear us clap for that earlier. I mean, that is astonishing accomplishment. And I know that under Prof Anlil and Dr. Dai and Prof Marwala, that that is not the end point of your pursuit of excellence. It's also self-evident in the university's overall ranking at number four in South Africa, at number five in Africa, and in the top 500 on the Shanghai rankings. At the same time, of course, it's also evident in our graduates and in our research and how these together with our academics are transforming our professions, transforming our nation, transforming our continent and building a new world. For all of these accomplishments, I simply want to give thanks to our amazing and challenging staff here at the SDH in particular, to our students and the full range of our university leaders across workers, students, the executive, our council, our various board. 
and I also give special thanks and praise to our partners and to our friends and today in particular I want to also celebrate especially the living legacy left by Sir Saul without which the STH again Len as you've reminded us without which the STA STH would not have reached the stellar status that it has and so may today be one of celebration and thanksgiving, but also one of reflection, of renewal and of innovation. Our country stands on the precipice of a new dawn. May this moment that we share together provide for us that moment of reflection about our role in making this new dawn a real dawn rather than a false dawn. Let us pull together to make this possible. And so, as the first recipient, I am extremely, extraordinarily honored and privileged. As I say, it is something that I do not take lightly, nor for granted. It's been a very special privilege and honor to be part of the leadership team of this university. As I've said on other occasions, other farewell and goodbye occasions, I came here to unleash the possibilities within each one of us. My role here was simply to remind us about the power that resides in each one of us. My role was to remind us here that no one, no one is born to be second best. And that we must always strive to be the very best that we can be. So that in that best, we can build an extraordinary prosperous South Africa, Africa and world. And so may those who receive this prestigious, this beautiful um, award, and honor those who receive after me. May they also continue to be extraordinary ambassadors of this amazing school. And so on that note, I simply want to say, um, I am deeply honored and deeply privileged. Um, thank you so much. Professor Iron used a word towards the end there that I've never heard in my life. Did he say ingeluk? I'm going to need some translation from you later. <laughs> wow, a man who has a way with words. Incredible, sir. Incredible. As you were speaking, in my mind I was replaying scenes from Will Smith's movie, The, the Pursuit of Happiness. But in my movie starring you, <laughs> the title is The Pursuit of Excellence. And I must say that witnessing your relentless, as you put it, pursuit of excellence during your tenure at UJ, witnessing the way and the manner in which you went about doing what you did for not only our institution and her students, but also for our country, it was extraordinary. And the, the debt of gratitude that we owe you for your leadership, I don't think we can ever fully repay. But thank you for accepting our token of appreciation. Now I'm getting back on script again before I get too sentimental. Your commitment in transforming UJ into the institution of learning that it's become under your curatorship is a thing of beauty. The legacy that you leave behind will live in the students, the staff members, the friends and colleagues whom your future-focused leadership has so greatly touched. And so with our thanks to you for a seamless transition, we now usher in a brand new era. An era under the vice chancellorship of a man whom I am so looking forward to meeting and getting to know. Ladies and gentlemen, to introduce our new Vice-Chancellor and Principal, 
gives me honor to welcome to the lectern the Executive Dean at the College of Business and Economics, Professor Danielle Van Lil. Good morning, dear ladies and gentlemen. What an absolute, absolute pleasure to be here with you. And may I use the word friends and family, because this is how it feels today. And I'm so glad that you went off script for a while because it gave me a moment to recover and to <laughs> work through many of the stories and emotions. And especially when I saw that video over there and, all, and I recognized so many students. And I think back of conversations in class. And um, I'm, a, I'm a, t a researcher and a teacher by heart. This is, this is what I am. And to see all of this and to see our new generation here and many of my colleagues uh, it's actually an interesting journey which started way back in 1994. And uh, this is where I was still working in Bloemfontein. And I heard about a hospitality guard called Doc Monet. And I wanted to know who is this man. So I drove all the way from Bloem, right there, Doc, do you remember, in your office in the old hotel school? And I got to know you and I got to understand how things fit together. And since then, so much has happened. And um, this school and its history and being part of the UJ is, is just an amazing experience. But let me get, get back to the task at hand. I think we are indeed blessed today. It is raining. It is early autumn. We are sitting here in a lovely, lovely venue. And uh, I see many of the spring flowers, I'm referring now here to the students, who will bloom and grow into big trees beyond our time. What a good what a good feeling. It's also interesting that this moment coincides with the onset of the autumn graduations. And um, we will have the first one for the college on Friday. And in the course of the upcoming two months, uh, our college will graduate in the order of about five and a half thousand graduates. Now, um, and that doesn't compare nearly to the university's total output of about 12,000 graduates and its impact on the future. So I think the part of my job at graduations is to read out the names of, of our graduates. And the reason why we read out the names is to publicly say, dear friends, families, mothers, fathers, and sisters, we recognize publicly that this graduate is now equipped with skills and knowledge to take the way forward to make our country and our continent a better place. And in doing so, I'm always, always thinking to myself, is, is this truly a great graduate walking the stage? And what exactly is a great graduate? So I figured out a few things over the years, but there's one that I want to single out today. And this is that none of us are born with life maps. All of us have a, a map that kind of, that we shape ourselves, which psychologically and which behaviorally, in terms of what we do, guide ourselves as we move on. But now the important thing is that a map needs to be updated regularly, otherwise it becomes redundant. Now this is where the GPS thing kicks in. And if you have wonderful GPSs in your life, it is one of the most glorious blessings that you could possibly imagine. And um, in our lives, this room is filled with GPSs. And there's a story that we can tell about each one of you. Um, and for me, a wonderful story is Mujaji, who will get her master's later this year and then become an official UJ alumnus. Len, Saul, Prof. Rensburg, I still find it difficult to call you Iron, really. Zizirka, also an alumnus of the College of Business and Economics, so everybody. Um, so I think all of these individuals have enriched our lives. And today it's my honor to introduce you to a GPS in my frame of reference. So let's just check out the credentials. Now I'm, I'm, I'm almost out speaking as I would do in class, but so forgive me. So what is the first one? This particular professor called Chalitsi Marwala graduated uh, with a BSc in mechanical engineering 
at Case Western University. Now, at graduation, you get graduates, and then about one out of a hundred is cum laude, or with distinction. But folks, did you know that you get something called a magna cum laude? So he got his first degree, magna cum laude. Then he... I know you don't like the bragging thing, but I'm doing it now on your behalf. So. And then he went on to the University of Pretoria where he got a master's in mechanical engineering and then went on to do a PhD in engineering at Cambridge. And over the years, he continued as a working in industry. He was in SA Breweries as a designer, not a taster, I believe, Professor <laughs> Um Let's just call it quality assurance. And uh, then he, but he kept on publishing and promoting his scholarly work to the extent that he was eventually awarded with the NRF, that is the National Research Foundation's President's Award for Research. Professor Marwala was also rated, is also rated as a B-rated researcher, which means an internationally recognized researcher, becoming a leader in his field. And in all of these endeavors, he also was awarded the order of Mapungukwe, uh, which is one of our country's highest recognitions that you can receive in a field. But then, you would imagine now with these kind of credentials that he was working day and night behind his computer, but that was indeed not the case. I met Professor Marwala when we served together as deans and when he was the dean of the Faculty of Engineering and the Built Environment. And that faculty has, in a very short space of time, took on an enormous identity contributing towards UJ's global excellence and stature. And then Professor Marwala went on to become, become the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research and Internationalization, which were two of his key, sport, key portfolios. And today, dear ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce you to the Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg. So may I say otherwise, the General of the Orange Army. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, uh, for that. Uh, uh, it's quite pleasant to be here today. I also would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, Sir Saul Kesner. Now, uh, Ashla, speaking of movies, I was thinking of a movie that will best describe um, Sir Saul from Troyville to Beverly Hills. <laughs> That's what I came up with. I also would like to um, acknowledge the presence of uh, our former Vice Chancellor, 
Aaron Vance back and his lovely wife, uh, Sizeka. You are welcome uh, back to the University of Johannesburg. Uh, Len Volman, your reputation precedes you. <laughs> and I think uh, we are always glad to see you at uh, the University of uh, Johannesburg. I also would like to uh, acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, senior leadership uh, of uh, STH, the board, um, Mujaji Ramawera, the chair. Uh, you are welcome. You are going to get our support, our full support. You see, where I come from, Mujaji is actually a name for royalty. Uh, they even make rain, isn't it? <laughs> the rain queen is from the Mujaji uh, uh, family. And we're glad that um, you brought rain with you today. Also, uh, members of, um, of um, former members of the STH board, I see Cyril, not to be confused with the president of the country. <laughs> <laughs> this is a different Cyril, uh, former um, member of UJ Council, um, a person that I worked very closely with for many, many years. Uh, welcome uh, back to the University of Johannesburg. Uh, Diana. Um, Diana is uh, the head of STH. She's done a fantastic job. I think we should give her a round of applause. <laughs> I see um, MEC members. I see Nolwazi Mamurare. She is actually an actress. She is acting as uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Finance uh, and also other leaders of, um, of, uh, of UJ. Now, why is it important, and I was glad, uh, Saul, that you used the word investment, uh, not donation. Because what you really uh, that you did was actually an investment. Not just an investment uh, into the, the well-being of the current generation of, 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 of people in South Africa, but also of future generation. And your contribution to this, uh, if I were to quote um, Iron, will reverberate uh, throughout eternity. I think that is actually something that needs to be applauded. Let's give Sir Saul a round of applause. I'm reminded of a quotation, and I quote, knowledge becomes education when it serves society. Uh, and this is really what this is all about. It is about serving society. It's about leaving a legacy uh, that is greater than ourselves. It is about making sure that we put everything into place to make sure that our society uh, prospers. Tourism is quite key. Uh, by the way, Sir Saul, the first hotel I saw was one of your hotels. It was called Vendor Sun. <laughs> and uh, it took a long time. I couldn't quite afford to go and live in it. I used to go and look at it. Uh, but uh, again, this is really what it is all about, leaving a legacy leaving a legacy for other people to, to use in order to leave their own legacies so that our society can become progressive, not regressive, so that those who come after us become better than us, not be like us. That is what a progressive society is all about. And tourism is actually at the center of our economic activity. And it needs to be expanded. Uh, and the School of um, Tourism and Hospitality is playing a role. And I am glad that it is actually positioning, it, positioning it itself in the fourth industrial uh, revolution, which I'm going to talk about, by the way, uh, before I sit down. So as we continue to educate young people, many, some of whom are here with us, let us uh, understand 
that uh, it really it is about the economy. We educate people so that we can build a vibrant economy for, for our society, so that we can tackle the triple challenge of unemployment, inequality, and poverty. This is really what we are trying to do. And we are trying to do this by making sure that uh, what we do is informed by knowledge, is informed by evidence. That is why we do research at the University of Johannesburg, so that policymakers, and I know I was uh, 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 on the phone with uh, the Minister of uh, Tourism, uh, uh, Mr. Derek Hanekom, and he was uh, saying he is looking forward to coming to the University of Johannesburg, but uh, he won't be able to make it. He was supposed to come next week. As we work with our policymakers in creating an, an environment where people are not only going to come to South Africa to visit us, but they are actually going to have an experience that will allow them to tell other, others to actually come and see what is happening uh, in South Africa. I am told that every international tourist that comes into the country actually um, uh, uh, you know, creates four jobs. And I'm trying to calculate uh, 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 the logic of that, but uh, they, I've been told this uh, many, many times. So as you can see, with huge problem of unemployment that we face as a country, it makes sense to invest in this industry land. It makes sense that our industry must be world class. It makes sense that uh, we exceed what uh, Saul has uh, given us. You know, the first five-star hotel uh, in the country. I don't know whether a six-star hotel is possible, but, uh, but certainly we need to exceed what the legacy that has been left for us. Now, as the University of Johannesburg, what is our vision to take this journey forward? This is, uh, this is a bit of a reflection there. As an engineer, I get excited when I see, <laughs> when I see this. What we are doing at, at, at the University of Johannesburg is basically to undertake research. And what is research? It is made out of two words, re and search. Re is actually a shortcut for repeated. So it means we are searching for answers. We are searching for answers such as, why do people not come in large numbers to our country? What sort of environment should we create for the people who come to our country so that we can expand this industry? So we ask questions, we answer them, and we ask them again, we answer them, because this is never an ending journey. We will never be able to reach that summit that we have now, we now have uh, visitors in South Africa that we need and we cannot improve. We will always have to improve. And that is why research is very, very important. So I am glad to learn that 25% of, um, of uh, knowledge that is produced in this college actually comes from STH. In fact, <laughs> but the most cited professor uh, in this college is actually from STH. So you are doing a good job. And obviously I have a conversation, a tough conversation with Daniel to say, let's expand this success to other domains in your college. You know, so that um, STH does not contribute 25%, but it contributes 10%, but more output. <laughs> you see, the concept of getting more for less actually applies here. You do more, but you, your, your contribution becomes less because others are also playing the game. Very, very key. So we are going to continue to do research that is going to inform policies in government, that is going to inform strategies in companies such as uh, 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 you know, uh, Sun International uh, and what the one and only also must be informed by, by what we do here at the University of Johannesburg and in particular at uh, STH. We also 
invest so that uh, we can advance our teaching and learning. Now, when we advance our teaching and learning, what it means? It means more graduates come out of our environment. I was glad uh, that uh, 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 last week I drove to, to Limpopo. And I stayed in a hotel in, uh, in Pulukwane. And the person who was actually responsible for that outfit actually was a graduate from the University of Johannesburg. I said, this is really what it is all about. You know, uh, you go to a place and you stumble across people that actually came through our educational infrastructure that we have invested time, money, and resources to make sure that uh, uh, they succeed. So it is really about teaching and learning. It's not about how many students you get into the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the outfit. It's about how many of them are successful in undertaking whatever they are learning. It's about making sure that we don't have any uh, uh, dropouts. People who come here with hopes of completing their qualifications and live without those qualifications. It is about hopes of people who come here hoping to learn something and making sure that when they come out, they have learned more than what they had expected to learn. This is really what it is all about. So I am quite glad to know that uh, STH, your success rates are quite impressive. And I think let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> We just uh, 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 started a business school. It's called the Johannesburg Business School. Says so Saul, when you, when you hear the word Johannesburg Business School, it sounds like a very old business school, isn't it? You know? Because Johannesburg is an old city. You know? It is a young uh, business school, but its ambitions actually will make you think that this is a business school that has been around for more than 100 years. And this business school, which is now located in a glass building outside, which used to be Otto and General uh, 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 Headquarters, will have to work very closely with, um, with your board, with uh, your staff, to make sure that uh, the business dimension of uh, hospitality and tourism is actually increased. It's increased so that when our graduates come out of, uh, of, 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 of graduation, they not only become runners of outfits like the one that I had actually just attended, they become owners. They become owners of, um, of organizations that not only have local impact, but have global impact. This is really what we, wa we, we are planning uh, moving forward. Now, what is this thing called the fourth industrial revolution? Why are we taking the University of Johannesburg into the fourth industrial age? We are taking the University of Johannesburg into the fourth industrial uh, uh, age because the world is moving in that direction. We are taking the UJ there because we have the greatest potential of being world leaders compared to any other university in South Africa. Now, what is this fourth industrial revolution? We were having a debate. Uh, in fact, it's going to appear on Sunday uh, independent. Uh, the president, when in his State of the Nation address, was talking about the digital industrial revolution. Still. The digital industrial revolution is actually the third industrial revolution. It's about electronics. If we pay attention to the third industrial revolution and forget about the fourth industrial revolution, we are going to be left behind. In this fourth industrial revolution, uh, technology is going to become intelligent, driven by artificial intelligence. Technology is going to be intelligent. We will be able to know visitors coming to South Africa 
before they even start planning that they are coming to South Africa. Targeted marketing. We know that. You, know. you see it on Facebook. That uh, you just go and look at, um, at, at, at a particular place and all of a sudden uh, things about that particular place start appearing on your page. You know. This is really what the fourth industrial revolution is all about. It's about using technology that is intelligent to be able to improve whatever we are doing as, as long as it is good because of course any technology can be used uh, as a destructive agent now as a country and as a continent we probably missed uh, the first the second and the third industrial revolution just on the third industrial revolution we still do not have a homegrown computer company or cell phone company that manufactures cell phones. These are the industries of the f third industrial revolution. We cannot afford to miss the fourth industrial revolution. And this is not really just about technology. It's going to touch all aspects of what we do as the University of Johannesburg. And therefore, I shall be leading you into the fourth industrial revolution. And hopefully, I shall be leading you, being enthusiastic about this vision, not kicking and screaming. <laughs> because sometimes technology is, uh, is, is, is quite uh, scary. Now, before I sit down, uh, say Saul, and by the way, for those of you who do not know why I am calling him Sir, I'm calling him Sir because he was knighted by the Queen of England as a knight. Now, how does uh, the Queen does it? I think it involves a, a sword, isn't it? Does it involve a, a bit of a sword? But it would not be used violently, by the way. That is why. <laughs> that is why he is still in good shape. You know, <laughs> he's still in good shape, uh, uh, looking uh, 20 years younger. You know. So he was knighted by the queen for the good work that he has done. And once you are knighted by the queen and you come from um, a commonwealth country, then you can use the title sir. If you come from the United States, you can be knighted. Uh, uh, Bill Clinton was knighted, but he cannot use the title sir. He just used the postscript KBE. Knight of the British Empire. So, as I conclude, uh, Sir Saul, let's connect. Whenever you are in Johannesburg, this is your home. This building is actually a Saul Kersner building. It is named that. Uh, if you go out, for those of you who have not uh, bothered to look, you will see that. Um, it is actually named after you. So, Sir Saul, you have thousands and thousands of students who are looking at your name on a daily basis. And they take that name to their communities where they come from, and they come from all over the world. All over the world. 7% of our students, which is uh, about uh, 3,800 students, actually come from outside South Africa. So they take this name all over the world, and this is really what it is about. And then people will know you without knowing you. And maybe uh, as um, the next thing we should uh, uh, put say in front of that uh, name going forward. <laughs> Uh, because uh, if the queen, and we, I know the queen probably will visit this place, will say, how dare can you call somebody that I have knighted with my sword uh, without um, uh, appropriate titles. So thank you very much. This is really about connecting, and this is about honoring you uh, for the investment that you have made uh, to the University of Johannesburg, but also to South Africa, and also to the rest of the African continent, and all other students who are going to walk through our corridors to study, coming from all over the world. I thank you very much. 
Nyawonga Siawulela Bayadanki. The newly minted Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Johannesburg, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Chilidzi Marwala, or as we shall refer to you from now on, sir, hashtag Lion of UJ. <laughs> and your pride is very excited to be led by you. I don't know how many of you still have Facebook, but a while ago, because you know what they're doing. A while ago, there was an image that was circulating, and indeed it went viral. It was a picture of, I think it was three very young boys in t-shirts with dusty legs and hands and feet. And they were reenacting what they had seen somebody in their village do. The one little boy was a cameraman. The other one was the, cl the, um, the sound per person. And the last little boy was the director. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's so important for us to remember that the children are here to replace us. And for the future in the back, the baton that we've been handed to you, as you can see, it didn't come easily. And our handover is filled with such illustrious people. We always have to be cognizant of who is watching us. Those little boys saw a TV or movie crew doing their thing, and so inspired were they that they reenacted. And Professor Iron is looking at me like I'm talking absolute sense. Thank you, sir. <laughs> the example that has been set for you by the illustrious speakers at this lectern today, I think that you need to remember as much as possible of what was said here because we in turn will be watching you to see what you do with the baton that we've handed to you. Yes? So we are just about to wrap up the formalities and we have two more items left on our program of events and we're about to award the trophies of appreciation to two more worthy recipients. I'd like to call on our dear Dr. D as well as Ms. Matsatsi Ramuela to do the honors, please. Ladies in leadership, the honor is yours. Dumela. Ah. The Macheron. Uh, Abshani, Mipukile, uh, Sanwanani, Huyamore, good morning. What did they say? How did they say it in Portuguese? Bonde or something? Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Away. That's what D is saying. Shoo, I tell you what. How many 11 official languages? How have I done? I'm with it, eh? I'm getting on with the program. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, how do we do this protocol thing? We just get on with, yeah, all protocol. No, it's not gonna be cool. Okay, so, shall we do this? KBE, Saul Kersner. <laughs> Sir Saul Kersner. Let me greet you first. Thank you for being here. Taking the time to come and join us down here in the South to see how we're doing things down here, that we're still with it. And I see you smile this morning, so we're doing it, aren't we? Yeah. Greetings to you. I'm like acknowledging you in line with the protocols. Let me also acknowledge uh, the presence of our new vice chancellor, Professor Marala. Thank you for your address. Uh, our outgoing, Professor Prinsbeck. Outgoing, outgoing, out he's still here. So he's outgoing. He's still in the building. <laughs> thank you for joining us. And really thank you for your speech this morning. Let me also acknowledge um, the dean, the executive dean of uh, the College of Business at the UJ. Uh, let me also acknowledge colleagues uh, out of the UJ, the council. Um, um, you know, they've been acknowledged earlier on. And of course, uh, the board of STH, 
uh, with, uh, shall we say, outgoing and outgone, Gillian Saunders. You are outgone. <laughs> it was Monday, so you're still outgoing, yeah? Our chairperson of the STH, uh, Gillian Saunders, uh, and the rest of the board members that are here today. Let me also acknowledge the director of the school, of uh, um, the STH school, uh, Dr. Dime. Uh, thank you so much for, for putting this function together and everybody who put, uh, you know, who joined in the team that put this uh, function together. And yes, if I haven't acknowledged anybody, I think I want to acknowledge Doc Monet, who's here as well, for, for joining us today and still being active uh, in our space as a tourism industry. So mine is just to do the vote of thanks. But as part of doing the vote of thanks, I just want to go back and just say a few things about some of the people that we have in this audience, uh, just from my end. And I'm starting with Sir Saul Kessner. Uh, the work that we have done to put the travel and tourism industry of South Africa and the African continent globally is immense. We thank you. You are a light to many of us who are in this industry, young and old. I haven't come across anybody who is in, especially in the hospitality space, who doesn't mention you. People mention the fond memories of your early days, which you narrated to us this morning. But a lot more people will narrate the work they've done with you, being a mentor, and the great establishment called Sun City, which still stands today. One of the colleagues I met in my career, giving the story about your work you did in Sun City, was mentioning how you used to walk about and check the taps if they were shined in the various hotels, yeah? And you were the man on top, but you found time to be able to do that. Because after all, that's what hospitality is about. It's not about sitting in the grand offices and signing the checks and looking at the reports. It's ab absolutely going out there and seeing to the services that you provide as, as a hospitality practitioner, but also meeting the guest because they are there to come and experience that which you promise you're gonna give to them. To add the cherry on top by being there personally to, to meet them is absolutely wonderful. Thank you, sir, for all that you have done for us and you continue to do today. We always thank you for coming back here because those who are still learning, the, the youth at the back, they look to you, as Professor Marola has said. Thank you so much for that. I also want to thank Doc Monet. I first had I had, I read about you first and the work that you did. But in my conversation with one of our industry legends, Otto Stelic, he told me a lot of things about you. And we appreciate the work you have done and everybody who helped you. And I hope and I trust that what you saw, the work that has been done and where STH is going is pleasing to your heart. And that you're giving it your blessings this morning as you're sitting with us. Thank you so much. I also want to thank an STH board member, Soro, where are you? Who's that going? He tells me he's spending time in the Eastern Cape these days, doing some groundwork, giving back, because it's never over until it's done. Soro, thank you very much for the work that you've done and you put into STH. You and I sat in the board of STH, first with uh, uh, Prof. Fanil, and then, of course, with Dr. Dai, you know, helping us to do our little bit, contribute our little bit into giving some direction to this school. We really thank you for that work. So go well with the work you're doing in the Eastern Cape. <laughs> Professor Rensbeck, I remember reading about the Afrikaans, what? Rand Afrikaans University. Hmm, okay. Yeah, where is this university? I didn't even know where it was. And then it became the Johannesburg, University of Johannesburg. I thought, okay, there's a, uni a new university in South Africa. Where is that? It's a near man. It's not a new university. It's called the Rand Africans. It's now becoming the University of Johannesburg. Oh, really? Okay. And one man was explaining this transition. And that's the first time I heard the name of Aaron Ransberg. And then I went about wanting to find out who's this man. What does he do? What inspires him? And I read a lot about him. I'm not going to say the stuff I read about you, uh, but it inspired me. I just want to thank you particularly on behalf of the STH for the support you've given the school, 
the leadership, that the, the support that Dr. Dai received from you and the University Council, we really thank you. Leading the transition of the university, absolutely very grateful for that. But specifically, we fought in the board, the STH board, to retain the independence of the STH. As the new College of Business was emerging, and we were running the risk of being swallowed somewhere, we fought. We rode back to Professor Fanile. We said, it is not happening. The School of Tourism, we, I remember writing all sorts of stuff. This is important. Tourism is front and center. Uh, look at the WTTC report, the UNWTO. This thing cannot be swallowed anywhere. There's no other school you know, that is standing out and with the legacy. Please, please, please. And finally, the news came. We are standing as one of the six schools in the College of Business. We're like, yay! <laughs> we celebrated. You know, because it, it, it then, to us, uh, gave back the message that said the university has had us. They are in the fourth industrial revolution, Professor Morana. Because tourism is front and center of any economy in the world. Anybody who thinks tourism is a side thing that must be covered somewhere else, they haven't. They don't understand the fourth industrial revolution. Everything we do in our industry is everything that society does. And it's high time that everybody in this country, in the continent, understand this. One of my biggest bugbear is how politicians, especially in our continent, don't get this thing called tourism. That they don't give it the necessary attention. If you look at some of the various governments, the kind of ministries you know, where tourism falls in, it's always covered somewhere else under some minister who doesn't even understand what this thing is all about. We are missing out, Professor Marola. You mentioned about missing the fourth industrial revolution. I stand here and say, if governments in our continent are gonna continue to ignore tourism, and the value that it has for society in terms of development, especially if you're in a developing nation, we will miss a whole lot of opportunities. And so I'm hoping, Professor Morala, that we will get the, the support you promised here to give to the, to the STH, it's what we can count on uh, within the leadership of the UU. We will demand a lot, and we will motivate a lot, but we hope that you will certainly give us the support. And so I'm struggling between thanking Professor Rensback and also onto you, uh, our new VC, that we will look to you to be able to give us the kind of support that this tourism is requiring. We are fortunate, and, and for the first time, I think in my years of watching the sauna in South Africa, that our president mentioned tourism not in a fleeting moment. He mentioned it with some content that gave me the feeling that this president gets it. He understand it. And so two weeks ago when we were taking stock of the sauna, somebody said, guys, colleagues in the tourism industry, seize the moment. This president has taken in, he's got into this seat, he was not elected into it, he's in a transition phase. But even in his transition phase, he put tourism right on top. He's got 14 months to demonstrate that he indeed can take on and lead this country come 2019. US tourism were mentioned, were the first sector after agriculture that was mentioned by this president. Make sure you seize this moment. So that come 2019, this president just doesn't mention you in a fleeting moment. He mentioned you extensively, but he gives you the right of policy support because we need the rest of government to support our industry. And we need the rest of the academic sector to get this thing and support our industry. And so before I get kicked off the stage by Ashla, uh, I want to say to Dr. D, I hope I've covered, I've done what you asked me to do. Uh, but I will not have done justice if I don't thank Dr. Billy Gallagher, who I joined this board during his tenure. What an inspiring man. We remember him fondly, and the school will always remember him and take on the lessons that he left us with. And so, I also want to thank all the sponsors, all the partners that have also supported the, uh, the STH in its beginning years, and it today and going to the future. Our partners in the industry, City Lodge Hotel Group, Zoho San, Protea Marriott, I see Neil Ball, he's in the audience. Neil, aha, as part of two of us. And my good friend Judy is sitting next to you. Uh, we thank the industry for the support. Um, and we hope that we can count on the industry to give us much more than money into the future. We have, a, we have identified one of the many challenges for the STH going forward that we want to get back to industry. We are going to be asking you, Judy Nokwedi, Neil Bolt, um, Karen, Thomas Overback, everybody, 
to give the knowledge that you've gathered in the industry into this university. We are going to ask you to enroll and share. Get the masters and the doctorates, but that you'll be sharing the knowledge that you have gathered over the years and bring it back to the institution. Because when we continue to complain as industry that we're not getting the kind of students that are useful to us, we must blame ourselves. Let's share what we are learning and bring it back in here. And hopefully that's one of the things we're going to do going, to, going forward. And so thank you so much, Len Wallman, the Waterford Group, always coming here, giving us the international best practice, challenging us. So we look forward to that partnership, to everybody. I thank you. Thank you, dear Matsatsi, for the vote of thanks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to hand over two more trophies of appreciation to two board members or former board members to whom we are eternally and incredibly grateful. If we could call the first of our two former board members up, please. You've heard quite a bit about this young man this morning. Um, Eastern Cape bound, but before he goes, he's going to get a trophy. Cyril, please come up to accept a token of our gratitude. Thank you very much, Cyril. And next is a woman who bears my second name. She is one of my heroes. Please come up, Gillian. <laughs> They're just having a, a sub-board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, distinguished guests, I'm not going to go through the whole long list. We as the board, with Dr. D and the executive, conceived this event last year, and it's a total fluke that the chairmanship is changing at the same time. So it's not about me, it's about us as the STH saying thank you to Prof. Van Rensburg, and thank you to Sol as our benefactor and welcoming Prof. Moala and saying we're here and ready to go into the fourth industrial revolution with you, with tourism. I just do want to say a couple of thanks, if I may. I took on, you can say, big shoes. I came in after Billy Gallagher. I had to say at the time, I'm not taking Billy Gallagher's shoes. Please don't look to me to be a Billy Gallagher. So I probably was very, very different to Billy. But I have to say my thanks, as, as um, Masetsi did to Billy. He was an amazing mentor. And for his few years that he was around, post my taking on the chairmanship, he also supported me a huge way in, in running the board, if you want to call it that, and supporting the school. I was there through Daniel for one year. In fact, I helped recruit Daniel under Billy's um, term as a, a chairperson, as the dean or director of the hotel school. And we as the hotel school are very proud that he is now the dean of the College of Business after being the dean of the Faculty of Management. So we have great alumni in the industry and we have great alumni in the university. We think we're doing quite well. Um, I then had Prof. Um, Peter Creel, who is not with us tonight for one year, and then Diane's been working with me for nearly seven years, six years. And it's been fantastic working with Diane and her team. And you saw the video at the beginning that showed you where this school and where it has gone to in these years that um, she's been leading the team here in the last few years in particular. So thank you to Diane and her team. Thank you to Billy Gallagher. And then I want to just say my own personal thanks to two board members who are here tonight, Len Woolman and Cyril, who have always been fantastic support to me as the chairperson of the board. And they've always given me great um, input, great mentoring as well. And that has helped me be involved in this school. I'm passionate about the tourism industry. I've been in the tourism industry in this country for, I've forgotten, 35 years. And before that, in the tourism industry in other countries, um, some of those hotels that Sol looked at, or I'd, I've, not, I've visited them, I've worked in others in Europe. I'm passionate about this industry and what it can do for this country, what our president says it can do for this country, and particularly what it can do in terms of transformation, economic growth, empowering people who need to be empowered both gender and race-wise. It is a fantastic opportunity to deliver. It's like low-hanging fruit for what we need in this country. 
And then uh, after that, I'm passionate about education, because what can you do with an industry if you don't have the skills to support that industry and the growth of the industry? And that's why I spent some time and tried to help and be involved in this school for the last seven, eight years. It's been a fantastic journey as chair, and before that, I was on the board. So not our event, it was an event we wanted to thank Prof van Rensburg, welcome Prof Moala, thank Sol, thank the board members, but it's been a great experience for me. And so thank you ladies for this wonderful, wonderful um, trophy. I will really treasure it. Thank you very much, Gillian. Thank you, ladies. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we wind up, there is an African tradition that bestows, bestows rather, a garment of great honor on a person of great honor. This garment that was designed by Bushang Nguana, I don't quite know what to call it. It's part neck piece, part breastplate, part shawl. Bushang and Kwana wove into it the elements of wisdom, symbols of grace, gratitude, and service. And if Litabo would please come up on stage, it gives us very great honor to bestow this piece of what is, in essence, art on you, Sir Sol. And when you see it, you'll be as blown away by it as I am because it is, in fact, quite fashionable looking as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Sol Kersner. Sir Saul, that the next time you see Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth of England, <laughs> you'll say to her, bow or curtsy, your, manager, your, your, ma your Majesty, I am Saul, the Sun King. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Honored friends, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time to spend this this, um, this event with us this morning. The rain is starting to fall even harder now, so we know that our showers of blessings are many. Please feel free to stay with us and enjoy some brunch, which is now turned into lunch. Do some networking and catch up with each other. And all the best for the future of SDH. Thank you, Sir Sol. Thank you, Vice Chancellor and former Vice Chancellor. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ursula Chigani. Good morning and God bless.